It was made around 1350. It was from Syria or Egypt. It kind of reminded me of Italy when there's the Murano glass with all the patterns in the glass because it was loads of intricate patterns and the really colourful and bright colours. And it was perfect. You look at it and it does look perfect. It's still here. It's not cracked or anything or chipped on the, on the sides, which is... Um, it's remarkable, it really is. But the most interesting part of it was the, the legend that this family who owned it made up about it. It comes with the story, the myth behind it, and they told the children that the fairies had come and sat round a well with the cup when a person came past and the fairies all vanished apart from one fairy and she said that if they broke the cup then there would be bad luck on the family. If a child did believe that, they must have like not touched it at all because they didn't want you know, the fairies to be mad at them. I know I wouldn't have wanted the fairies to be mad at me. And they actually used to have to hold a cloth under it if they wanted to drink from it, just to make sure that if it slipped, it wouldn't fall on the floor and crack. And people used to throw it around for a joke and they were quite rebellious. <laughs> but um, a case was made so that it was protected. If the artists were alive now and they could look at it, I, I can't imagine how proud they would be of having their artwork in here. It's just mind-blowing how things are crafted and I think, how could I ever do something like that? And think of all the effort people put into things and how it's been passed down through the generations and though the people may not last, their objects last and we see them today and that's their image because we have television and we have cameras and iPods and we can just take photos when we want to. But they have stories to go with an object to tell about their life.